So one more time, brothers and sisters. I can call you brothers and sisters, right? Praise God that we are here. It was a good prayer, good encouragement. A little bit about myself. And you, you, a lot of you know me, right? How I came into the ministry. I'm not going to say everything, but just specific moments about the battle. You know, when God chooses you or you have this desire to serve the Lord, let Him move you and let Him go before you. The way He wants it, not the way you want it. This is the first mistake we can do. If we're asking God, this is how I want you. This is how I want you to lead me. This is what you want, I want you to do for me. It's like you're using God. And we know His mind is not our mind and our ways is not His ways. It's the difference is very big. It's like a ground or that, right? Earth and the sky heavens so that's the big difference so we're nothing compared to the lord we're just his creation so when the creator says first seek the kingdom of god and the rest will follow that's exactly what he means he wants you and me to trust him in every step of our life and the ministry he's going to entrust us the way he's going to lead us the way he's going to guide us maybe sometimes we're not going to like it but this is the best way it's going to be for your life. Because last chapter, Ecclesiastic, last chapter, last two verses, when uh, Solomon, he tried a lot of stuff, right? You guys know. The whole, whole Ecclesiastic talks about what he tried. He tried uh, a lot of wives. He tried houses. He tried uh, money. He, he had everything. He tried whatever his heart desired. But after all these things, he said, it's all in vain. And he said, the full satisfaction is for you and me is in the fear of God. Everything that person needs, the creation, the cre you and me, everything that we need is in the fear of God. When you fear God, when you walk before Him, when you love Him, and when you give yourself to Him, and you serve Him, and you accept Him as your Lord, Jesus, Savior, and you die for yourself and live for him that's when you're going to be fully satisfied in your life yes there's going to be hardships yes there's going to be temptations yes there's going to be doubts but you will be god will teach you how to battle them how to overcome them how to fight with them and then uh, this is where i, I uh, you guys know a lot of times I, I was saying this couple times where in my ministry, I wasn't planning to be a pastor. I wasn't planning to just want to serve God. Just, I just opened my heart to sponsor where uh, people or sinners where lives getting saved. That's all I want to do. <laughs> I had a good business. I didn't want to be in the ministry. It's not that I didn't want to. I didn't even plan. I didn't even think that I'm able to, which I wasn't. I couldn't even put words together at the pulpit if you come out to the pulpit you can i couldn't even speak that's not for me you know how a lot of people say oh it's not mine it's not for me so i'm one of them don't say that god can use any one of you if he used me he can use you <laughs> that's for sure but my desire was just to know god more and do something for the lord and that's when god started picking me up leading me into the ministry then i got more involved involved and then they entrust me with one thing just remodeling the center the second center we bought in sacramento just remodeling that's it for me it was like wow i'm doing something more for the lord i wasn't looking at pastors i wasn't looking at minister ushers man praise god that's their duty they're up there they're really high i, I don't think that's for me you have to be so knowledge you have to be so close to the lord you have to be so uh whole like in spirit right we think sometimes they're so holy <laughs> you have to be there to, that's not for me but just remodeling the center but for me that's the best like at that time that was the best joy that i had i'm doing something for the lord once that done i said god i want to know you more then mexico opened up and what god did he opened up to a pastor to put me in charge of the ministry and nobody knew that i'd never been in the ministry in a mission trip not even once in my life but god saw my desire my heart and uh, that's how uh, we started in Mexico. And then after that, God, I want to know you more. And then uh, 
I remember first time I went uh, with the search curriculum. I remember I went to Oregon with him because we had a Bible uh, college in Oregon at that time. So I went with him to that school, and he was teaching in geology, demonology, how, uh, spiritual attacks, and everything else. I was listening there, and at that time, we were already praying for possessed people or demonized people. And then uh, God was teaching us in that. We already had some experience. I was so like fasting a lot, praying a lot. I remember we were praying for deliverance 12, sometimes to 14 hours nonstop for deliverance. It's not the right way. We didn't know how. The right way is to approach a person, talk to him, ask him, uh, talk to him, encourage him, have him uh, so he can believe in God, accept the Lord, open his sins, acknowledge that he is wrong, and come to the Lord. And he needs to want it. And when he wants it and he's sincere, God is sincere with them and he delivers it really fast. You know? But we didn't know. Person came to get deliverance, but they didn't want to let this go. I don't want to let this go. I don't want to let this go. And we're battling and it's the whole fight. Sometimes we had to hold people. Uh, maybe I'll bring some example, live examples that we went through. So with this some of the experience, I'm in there in Bible college. And in the last class, last day, one of the days, search is like, okay, Yuri is going to do a class tomorrow, and he's going to bring you a lot of examples about spirit. I'm sitting there, no, no, not me, no, I can't. You know how I prayed that night? <laughs> I was in prayer. God helped me. And God blessed me, so he, he so blessed me. So after that class, I remember a person comes to me. He was uh, in gain in L.A. He is uh, not gain, I mean, somebody gain. He was a different guy. Uh, he was in gain in L.A., uh, his name was Alex. Okay, I'll put the name in, right? You, some of you guys know him. And then uh, he came to me. He's like, Yuri, whatever you were just saying, I'm going through this. I have this attack because in game they did a lot, right? Bad stuff. So we went to the shop. And the shop was about this big, maybe smaller, a little bit smaller. And no one was there. I came to you. We came there. We start talking. And out of nowhere, somebody banged like this so hard in the corner. We know nobody's there. I jumped, I got scared. And he's like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes it happens in, out of nowhere. I was like, okay, brother, let's renown things. Let's confess things. And we pray with him. We confess and uh, praise God. I know he's serving the Lord. Uh, he's till this day uh, serving God and moving forward. And after that, another lady comes in. Yeah, what you talked about, I need, I need to talk to you. We start talking to her. She start manifesting. And then I was like praying with her, and then her was, uh, sometimes it's always different. This was like, I would ask in the name of Jesus Christ, what is your name? And with the, like a manly voice, the demon will tell his name, and she will remember that sin because she forgot. She confessed everything, but she's still manifesting. And I say, how many of you are there? They'll say, how many of them are there? Like, let's say fighting demons, right? There can be 20 of them fighting demons, all of them in that one. That's their duty is to fight. Then there's some uh, lust, uh, specific lust demons. And then some, maybe nine, ten of them. And I would ask how many of them. Then I pray, then it's like nine, less, five, and then zero. And then another one comes up. I was like, in the name of Jesus Christ, what is your name? He will say the name. And then she'll remember that sin or that situation or that moment. She will confess and they will leave. That's how we were going forward. And then uh, I, was with, I stayed with her. They closed the school. They left me with her in the room, and it was already dark, and I continued praying, you know, like, I was like so on, in, in fire, like, no, this needs to come out, you know. And then uh, Pastor Peter was looking for me, he's like, where is you? I know he was in school, when I see him, we we're gathering, and then they actually called the school, they couldn't reach me, I won't answer the phone, I'm in there praying. And then uh, he sent, uh, remember, John Yitkach, he came to school, he found me. He came, he's like, Yuri, that's, it's, it's okay, it's enough, let's go. <laughs> they took me, that's how uh, I was in, like, no, this, needs, this person needs to get freedom. No, we need to overcome, no. And I was so encouraged in the Lord, and like, that's, how, uh, that's my beginning steps. And that God, then God was start teaching us, don't, don't do that, you know, in another words. Talk to the person, explain to him, tell them about the truth. So the person can acknowledge, can receive, can know, 
and then he needs to want this. And once the person wants, yes, sometimes it's fast, sometimes it takes a couple of days, sometimes extra fast in prayer. It's always different, but this is the approach. We're not, we're not praying anymore, like two, three, five hours or something. So uh, it's better to maybe do a few times. Sometimes it's an hour, no problem or two. But you need to let the person talk to him. Tell him about the Christ. So the faith he, he receives, he, so he can believe. And when he believes, right, how do we get, how do we get, uh, how do we born again? Or how, how are we born again, right? In, uh, uh, in John chapter 3, it talks about that. When Nicodemus, he asked the Lord, why, am I have to go back to my mother's wounds? He's like, no. This is how you are born again, when you believe in Christ, the one who is crucified. And when you believe in him, when you accept him, you are born again. This is the salvation. So a person needs to know. And when you talk to him, when you encourage him, you talk to him, then you get delivered. They get delivered. Uh, so I remember one day in the class, uh, it was a blessed class. It was a, uh, I went uh, when there was 96 teenagers. It was in summer in Oregon Bible School. There was 96, I remember till this day, uh, teenagers. And I was talking, I, I was talking about, to them. I did a class. It's more than two hours. It's about eight to ten hours explaining we, we were bringing everything to the light teaching and then uh, of course it's god speaking through us right and after that was, i had about 35 to 40 confessions through the whole week it was probably the most i ever had within a week <laughs> and then uh, probably three or two around three or so uh were manifesting during the confession and then uh, we had to pray for deliverance and i got so tired i remember i went home and I still had a day, to the last day, uh, I believe it was the last day of my class. And uh, I was sleeping in the rehab center. I like to, when I was, when, when I went to Oregon, I would always stay in the rehab center. They gave me a room upstairs. And in that room, I remember I was sleeping, and then I see a black bull, big black bull, jumping on me and trying to smash me. By the time he gets to me, I had like a bubble clear bubble around me where he will slide to the side and he couldn't do anything. He tried for three times, it didn't work. So he will run and do it with his horns. But when he tries to poke me through the bubble again, it slips to the sides. And three times it didn't work. Then he just start rubbing me right here on the side. And I wake up and I see him rubbing. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, get away. And he took off. And in that moment, friends, there is no fear. You such a power and authority of God. And God, in those moments, he will never leave you. He'll show you the authority you have over the enemy. And it, it boosts, it's like, I would say, it boosts your faith, right? <laughs> it increases your faith, too. And I, I said, the Lord, thank you. I know I'm doing your work. I turned to the other side and went to bed. Next, after driving home, I came home. There's another surprise. A guy tried to write messages to my wife and then you want coffee or anything else and all this stuff when I'm not there. You know, when you come back, and it's like enemy trying to attack the family. He couldn't do anything to you. He tries to the family. And then, you know, in that moment, you're like, whew, I want to talk to this guy, <laughs> you know. But then in that moment, when I, when, I, when I felt that, I was like, whoa, it's a spiritual. I felt it. And I start fighting. I start praying for the brother. I start blessing him. And the next day, I came with victory. Yeah. And then it happened again. I remember I went to, a, I didn't tell him anything. But then I went to a Honduras trip. And we had a, such a blessed trip there. I come back. And again, my wife's showing me messages. She was a choir director. And one of the guys in the choir married, started writing while I'm gone. You know? And in that moment, I had peace. But what I did on Sunday, I came to church. I said, hey, brother, I want to talk to you. And we sat down and said, hey, you like my wife? <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, but why you write her messages? <laughs> oh, I just asked her. I said, brother, I know, right? <laughs> if there's just that, but hey, coffee, how you doing? Good morning. You're checking my wife. You're testing her, right? <laughs> He's like, sorry, sorry. I said, and you know what happened? I told him. It happened twice when I'm in a battle. Enemy had access through you to do that work. He got scared. He's like, brother, sorry, pray for me and stuff. And everything changes right there. 
so this is so why I brought this example so you guys know we're not fighting against the person the Bible says he's God has chosen you to fight against spirituality be something behind it all people are good they are created in the image of God he loves God loves every one of them so something behind it but enemy his very his tactic or his goal one of his main tools strong tools is unforgiveness if he got you if he is able to hurt you through somebody sometimes it's through very close ones if he's able to do that and you allow grouch and then unforgiveness into your life he got you on the hook you're not gonna be successful you're gonna lose every battle that you're gonna go against him you're gonna lose because he got a grab on you he's not gonna flee away remember the Bible says withstand him with this strong faith and what happens he flees away he is not gonna flee away from you he's gonna be with you demons gonna be with you Satan cannot be everywhere at the same time he can be in a certain time at a certain uh, in one place at a certain time that's why he has that everything organized like Jesus Christ he copies everything from Christ from God God is Trinity he has his own Trinity too uh, God is have a uh, prophecy he has his own false prophecy God has visions that he shows to his people he has visions too. God baptize you with the Holy Spirit in tongues he has that too I, I'm myself witness praying more than five times casting out false prophets false visions and false tongues they will pray in tongues only demons tongues so that's why i'm not blaming sometimes some different denomination or how you call them right denomination where they say oh the holy spirit is from satanic it's demons i'm not blaming them because there is an enemy trying to do everything he can to scare people for not to have it because they think their spiritual door is going to be open enemy devil's going to go in them and then uh, everything else because if enemy or devil was in me i wouldn't do this all these good things right <laughs> i speak in tongues i would not do that but the tongues i speak the holy spirit that is given to me by the lord it's encouraging me give me boldness and strength to go forward and overcome I remember a couple of times I'm praying in tongues and the enemy, the devil threw the enemy yelling, stop praying, stop praying in, in this, in this, stop praying like this, you know, <laughs> yeah, because they getting hurt because the uh, spirit interceding for us before the Lord and he knows what to intercede for. So there's a big difference. And another thing is if you're with the Lord and you ask him for the Holy Spirit, if you're with the Lord, you ask him for the strength, he's going to give you that. He's not going to give you something else because when you are in God God says you are in my hand and you are in my father's hand so no one will snatch you out of my hands and people thinking sometimes oh enemy gonna do this this to me how is the enemy gonna go into God's hand and attack you and go inside of you no God says I'm with you till the end of the days I'm in you and you are in me right when the Bible says in John I think it's chapter 6 when it talks about the bread and wine when we receive the bread of God he says you are in me I and I am in you and I am with you till the end of the days and that's why the Lord gave us the Holy Spirit and we are born again and uh, the Lord is spirit and you can only talk be, have relationship with him in spirit so he is with us every day of our walk and we are protected and enemy has no access to our life he flees away and enemy cannot cast out itself right and then so uh, may the Lord bless us and help us to understand be, and then uh, coming back to unforgiveness and grudge this is one of his big tools because he knows the Bible the Bible says if you cannot forgive we pray the our father prayer right or chinash and we say forgive our trespasses as we forgive others if you don't forgive he's not forgiven right after that uh, prayer where he was teaching his disciples it's in Matthew chapter 6 right after the prayer specifically he mentioned about unforgiveness he says if you cannot forgive your brother I will not forgive you but if you forgive your brother or sister I will forgive you simple 
And that's why if you cannot forgive, the, uh, chapter 18, Matthew says that you will be given to tormentors to torture you. And then uh, Matthew chapter 5, it says, if you're not going to uh, forgive, leave your sacrifice and go um, solve that problem with your brother, with your advisory, right? Go solve it. If not, you will be given to the officers and you will be put in jail till you give the last penny. So what happens there if you cannot forgive, if, you're not, if you have unforgiveness? What tormentors will torture you even if you're Christian? Even if you're Christian, you know the truth, follow the truth. If you're not following the truth, you open the doors for the demon to torture you. This is tormentors. They will torture you because I had that dream. God showed me who those tormentors are. It will attack you. It will, uh, there, more and more will come. Uh, hate, I, I saw hatred, I saw uh, anxiety, I saw unforgiveness, like all those, you know, fear, anger, they were all multiplying until I gave up and I cried out and I said, God help me. And that's what God showed me and, and then he spoke to me. This is what happens to a person who cannot forgive. And it's mercy of God. He didn't allow them to kill you, but he allowed them to torture you. So you gave up and said, uh, now I'm ready. God help me. I forgive everybody. He's like, finally. But why do you have to lose, lose everything? Remember that. In your ministry, anywhere you go, you will experience. But the good thing is when somebody hurts you, you have a very strong tool. And it's going to be a blessing in your life. Not to do evil for evil, right? That's First Peter 3.9. If you guys remember that. First Peter 3.9. Don't do evil for evil or revival for revival. But instead of that, bless because you are called to that and to inherit the blessing. So what happens when you, somebody goes against you, somebody hurts you, you're praying for them. Oh, it's not easy sometimes. And when it's your close one, David say, said that it's my close one who I eat the bread together. I trust it. He was sitting in my table. And he went against me. This is a hard one. I think without the Lord, sometimes it can't even, you can't even forgive. But with the Lord, you can. You just need to understand. By blessing him, you receive the blessing. That's what you call for. And God will multiply the blessing. An enemy will run away. He'll flee away. When God opened up to me that verse, because I had a problem in that moment, because people will cut me off, show me a middle finger, and I get mad and everything else. I was in Sacramento back then. I was before ministry. <laughs> I was a minister. And I had that problem. But when God revealed that to me and I started blessing them, which happened to me sometimes once a week, sometimes twice a week, often. When God revealed to me and I started blessing them, what happens, enemy, he found out, now his tool that would will, that will put me down brings blessing into my life. He tries to move those people away from me. He tried, and out of nowhere, all of them disappear. And I don't know how many years, probably 8 to 10 years, the last 8, 10 years I was living in Sacramento before moving here to Texas. Not even one, I don't remember, not even one person caught me off or showed me a middle finger or anything. <laughs> they all disappear. So that's what happens. But then something else happening. Then it's your close ones. Then it's your family. Then it's your ministers with you. Then some, God will test you in every way. And then they, because he, he needs to, for you to be strong, to be that warrior that's uh, able to overcome and go forward. Okay, we're talking about, uh, about overcoming, praying for deliverance and everything else, right? First question I want to ask you, do you guys even believe that there's angels? Uh -huh. I think unless some know, some yes. Let's, let's run through this really quick, if there is angels or not, or demons. And who are demons, right? Uh, so, first question, are there angels in Revelation? And we'll talk about more a little bit down the road. In Revelation chapter 12, 7, 9. I'm not going to read this, but I'm just going to explain a couple things, because we're not going to have that much time. So in Revelation 12, 7, it says that Mike, the archangel, fought with who? The dragon, which is devil, Satan, right? Revelation calls him dragon, Satan, devil, snake. Uh, he was fought with him and his angels. 
So did God fight with the devil? Yeah, and God says, Mike, Michael, <laughs> the archangel, go deal with this. And Michael, the archangel, is the main uh, angel or, or, or archangel is the one who is responsible for the warriors. He's the chief commander, I would say, in our words. He's the main one. And he, with his angels, fought against devil and his angels. And that's when they were cast down to hell. I mean, some of them in hell. So, uh, in Tartarus, there's a place that they're, they're locked till the day of ju the judgment. Some of them here on the earth, and we call them evil spirits, demons. And, uh, and uh, we know Satan is here still on earth trying to uh, show us this lust of this world, right? And for us to be part of it so we can go to hell. Because he wants to pay back as much as he can to the God, right? We created on the image of God. And he wants to put anything on that image, any tattoo, anything that just so you're not happy. Change it something so you're not satisfied. You're not glorifying God the way he created you. You know, something he's doing with the person torturing people. And we know what's in this world. It says, what's in this world? What's in this world is the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride, right? That's what's in this world. And don't be in love with this world. We have to be away from this world. That's what enemy wants to give you. But if you're with the Lord, He gives you strength to overcome and to go forward. So uh, the, back then, Sadducees denied also that there's angels. Even back then, some are denying, some are accepting. And then uh, we'll be talking about them a little bit. What does the Bible say about the angels? The Bible mentions angels in New Testament more than 160 times. In the Old Testament, it's 100 times. Just in the Revelation, in, uh, it's mentioned 65 times. So who are angels? Guys, do you guys know? It's right there on the screen, right? They are messengers. Angel, word angel, translates as a messenger. So there are messengers. You can be a messenger. And then here are some verses here in Matthew eleven ten. I send my messengers. That's when Jesus Christ sent his disciples. He says, I send my messengers. Exactly in Hebrew, same word as an angel. So, and also in the Old Testament, if we look... In the New Testament, Luke 9.52, I sent messenger before his face. It talks about, uh, I think it was a John Baptist. And then uh, also in the uh, Old Testament, 1 King 19.2, Jezebel, when she sent messengers to Elijah, telling him that she's going to kill him and stuff, right? So it's the same word. So angels translates as a messenger. But also angels also can be a human and Angel can be a spiritual being. They're God's messengers. I want to touch this subject a little bit. What are the angels created for? Because there is a lot of different theory, like that. A lot of different explanations. Some are saying, I heard it myself, uh, one charismatic church, the pastor was saying, guys, angels are given to you to minister to you and they're waiting for your command and you need to tell them what to do because they're not going to do it if you're not going to tell them so he says what i do i pray before i go to another city to preach i told my angels that god gave me to minister to me i told them go and prepare the way and when i get there i see god's blessing and everything else then i heard a woman's conference and one of the in charismatic church too and one of the women there she was teaching all the ladies, and she said, ladies, what are you waiting for? God gave you angel. Command that angel to go find you a husband that cannot be without you. And it's a conference. There's a lot of ladies there, and she's teaching them. So people are, uh, so I, I brought the verses here to explain who commands angels. Because uh, you don't know how many angels you need. You don't know who to send, where to send. It's the, and then uh, First verse is in Hebrew 1.14. 
their ministering spirit sent to, uh, out to serve for the sake of those who are in here at salvation. That's the verse they're using. It says, see, it's, it says here, right here, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to ministers for those who will inherit salvation? So that's why they send it to us and we, we tell them what to do. But this verse translates, I'll bring you guys a good example. Uh, if you, the, oh, how can I say that? I was sent here, or let's say you guys, by Vlad. Vlad invited me here to preach, right? So I was sent here by Vlad to minister to you guys. But I, I would not listen, what, I would not accept what he's telling me to tell you. I will listen to the Lord what to tell you. Same thing with angels. Yes, God sent angels to serve us, but when they will listen to the Lord how to serve us <laughs> and what to do and when. Because God knows everything. He knows how many angels to send. He knows when to send. And He knows how. He knows everything. And there are created beings to serve Him. Because down the road, is, it says right here, um, that in Psalm 9, 91, 11, He uh, talks about God, commands angels to guard you in all your ways. So who commands angels to guard you? And there was that moment, even Jesus Christ didn't command angels to step in for him. Remember when Peter, he striked him and he cut off his ear. Remember that moment? Jesus Christ didn't tell Peter, Peter, you know what? I can call angels right now and I'll command them and they'll destroy them. He says, I will ask my father and he will send, I believe it's like more than 12 legions of angels. I think one angel would have been plenty enough. In the Bible, in 1 Kings, we read, I think it was 1 Kings or 1 Samuel, uh, we read that when uh, one angel striked 185,000 warriors, one angel. 12 legion, in one legion, it's about 6,000. Like more than 72,000, right? So uh, in, in, in that moment, Jesus Christ said, I will ask my father. So we ask Father for help. We ask Father to protect us. We ask the Lord to guide us. And He knows how many angels to send with you to protect you. He knows when to send and how. It's because it's Psalm 91, 11. I found that verse right here. It says, For He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. I remember I was flying in a plane and then uh, to Matamoros one time and kind of worry about that project and the two ladies sat with me in the plane and then when I start talking to them and she said, I see a vision. God says he put angels to protect you where you go. <laughs> so God put angels to protect us, right? And then uh, I remember one moment back in Sacramento, Women's Center, there was a lady who was worrying about her uh, kids of... Uh, because she came from a witchcraft family. Her husband was a witchcraft, and the kids took her and brought her into the center. She was afraid because uh, that his, her husband or that witch will go after his kids because he cannot get her. She took off. And then uh, we tell her, no, no, pray. And God hears the prayer. And by your prayer, ask the center to pray with you, ask the church to pray with you. God will protect your prayer, uh, your kids. And she was still doubting. And I remember she went, uh, she, I, I came to the women's center once and she said, Yuri, look what happened. Uh, she said, God so confirmed me that he is taking care of my kids and he's protecting them. Uh, and I told her what happened. She said, there, one of the ministers came to the center and his two kids were running to the fence and there was a mean dog behind the fence and it was roaring and trying to get the kids. And when I saw that and I screamed, I was like, no. And then she said, I saw angel came over the kids and the dog like stopped and stopped wiggling his tail and <laughs> being nice and she's like this is that so confirmed me that God knows he knows when to send he knows he knows who to send uh, Psalm 33 8 angel uh, 
the angel of the Lord encaps all around those who fear him and delivers the, him. Of course, if you allow sin, uh, then I don't know how the angel is going to be there. That's why we need to be always clean, right, before the Lord. We always have to be right before the Lord for no other evil angel not come and be torturing you. So our heart always have to be clean. I remember I shared this with some of you guys. In one moment, uh, I allowed my anger come out or something, right? I didn't hold myself once, and I didn't ask that person apology. Yeah, he came to me at night knocking on my, uh, what's it called, door, uh, wall so hard. I felt his presence. I said, why you came? He's saying, quiet. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get away. He ran away, but then I sit down and said, God, what was that? And God clearly spoke to me. Don't give any room to the enemy. And I know to go and ask that person for forgiveness. And I did right away because I know no, don't give any room to the enemy. So when you're clean, when you're before the Lord, uh, uh, he's not going to have any access. And then uh, you know Nebuchadnezzar, uh, right? <laughs> that hard word <laughs> for me. Uh, when the three Shadrach, Mesach, right? Adinaga, or Abednego, or something like that. You guys know who I'm talking about. When they were in the furnace, what happens? Did they ask and say, angels, protect us? No, God knew who to send. And then uh, that king saw the fourth person that is protecting them. Then we know Daniel, right? He didn't tell lions, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, angels, protect me from the lions. He was in prayer with the Lord, in, in relationship with the Lord. And God knows when to send and who to send to protect him. And then who else is there? Okay, Psalms 103.20. Bless the Lord, you his angels. Look, who excel in his strength? Who do his word? So who commands them and tell them what to do? The Lord. Who do his word? Hearing the, uh, hearing the voice of his word. Hearing, uh, hearing his voice. And then uh, 103. Bless the Lord, ye, all ye, you his host, you minister of his, who do his pleasure. God's pleasure. So they listen to him, they fulfill his will. And just a couple of words. So angels are spiritual beings created by God. We can find that in John 113. In the beginning was the word, remember that, and the word was with God, and the God uh, and the word was God, and in the beginning it was him and he created everything. So they were created. The Bible testified that angels are created in Psalms 148.5, does not produce offspring. What that that what is, what does that mean? For in resurrection, when disciple asked them whose wife she's going to be, remember? In resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. So they're not marrying, they're not uh, getting married, or some say, oh, people, angels are sleeping with people, you know, and their babies are born, and this is all the lie. Yes, uh, I am um, a witness myself when people are too much into the pornography, sexual things, and then they allow once, twice, three, four times, then their doors are open, demon goes inside, and then more and more and more, and they start doing perverted things, more and more and more. And then, yes, it happens. I'm a witness of some people that even at night, uh, the, I'll, I'll talk about the men, right? It was on both sides, men and women, but I'll, I'll, I'll take one example of a man. He says, yeah, I saw a girl that I liked, uh, beautiful, and then at night she will come to me. And it will please me, but of course there won't be any burden or anything. But then they start torturing him. When he allows, allows, yeah, something before. In the beginning, they'll give you something for more and more of them to come in you. But when they're strong enough and they're ready to destroy you and kill you, that's when they start torturing you and leading you to... Uh, for you to kill yourself. So this is who devil is, right? It says there is no truth in him. He's the f a liar and the father of lies. 
So whatever he offers you, there's a lie behind it. Whatever he is, uh, this world offers you, there's a lie behind it for you to destroy yourself. When he's strong enough, that's when he's going to lead you. He's not going to kill you, but you're going to do it yourself. He's going to lead you to that. Jump off the bridge. Why should you leave? Uh, hang yourself. Why should you leave? Cut your veins. Why should you leave? That's, he, he, that's when he's strong enough. But I want to tell you one thing. If you come to the Lord with a sincere heart, he is dirty for you. Any addiction, any promises, any contracts with the devil that you had, God is stronger than that, and he can break any contract, he can rip any chains, and he can pull you out of it. And you can have joy in your life, you can have peace in your life, and you can have future in your life. I see those people, we, have those, we work with those people that are serving right now, the family, they have families right now, but they were deeply, deeply in addiction. Even with one lady, she says she painted her hair black right here, that was a covenant with her and the devil, and it started growing black. Until when she come to the center, she repented, and they started, they had to cut it, uh, renounce this covenant with the Lord. It was a big progress, process that there was a lot of spirit of death and everything was coming out of her. But she, deliv she got delivered, she was serving the Lord, she got married, and everything else. I know people like this, not even one. So there is always a chance and freedom, but uh, take it, take that freedom and hold on to that freedom. Don't try the world. Don't try. There's nothing good in that. May the Lord help us and bless us. Uh, so the Bible testifies angels are created. Uh, they do not give birth to any of their likeness. They were created. They are not internal being. Angels were created by God and they were existing. And they owe of Him. Um, so next one. What are the, were the creation created angels? Genesis 1.31. They were created perfect. Everything that he had made and did was very good, the Bible says. It was perfect. God created everything perfect, right? And then, uh, but he, God did not create it, uh, angels or us like a robot. He created us with the free will to believe in him and to serve him. Some people ask me, uh, you think angels can, can sin right now in heaven? You think they can go against God like the devil did? I said, I don't think so. They know what's going to happen. <laughs> the devil didn't know. Because of his pride, it said, the Bible says. He want to be like God. Pride, guys, if you allow pride in your life, it closes your eyes. It's like a veil over your head, over your eyes. You think you're right. You think you're going the right way. But in the reality, you're making a big mistake. Big mistake. You're going the right, wrong way. God, it says, hate pride. He is, God is not going to bless you when you have pride. God loves those who are humble. Humble, because he, Jesus Christ humbled himself till the death. So those who are humble, God will bless them and lead them and be with them. What, are the, what were the created angels? Perfect, right? Christ created angels holy. Even after sin entered the world, the angels who did not revolt revolt against God were called holy. Of course, they have a free will. I cannot die. And as a man, they were created beings. And I think, don't think if you see angels, uh, you will be serving God more, right? Because I know people did see that and they step away. Uh, in Old Testament, it talks about angels. I'm not going to touch those uh, parts, but uh, you guys know about Abraham. It's a very good example. In Genesis 18, 1 and 2, the conversation that Abraham had with angels, there's three, right, up here next to the tree. And do you know that he was talking to only one? He had conversation with one. And that angel told him uh, that he's going to have a child in the year. And uh, Sarah was in a tent. She wasn't with them sitting. She was in the tent, it says. So Abraham cannot see Sarah, right? But she hears how they talk. 
And when she heard that angel, one of the angels said that you're going to have a baby in a year. Uh, Isaac, как вы, Isaac, да? Isaac. She laughed inside, not even out loud. And that angel said, why did you laugh? And she's like, I wasn't laughing. She's like, yes, you did. Like, imagine you're sitting there, <laughs> he's talking to somebody, and she's laughed inside. So one of those angels, and then when he got up and started going, Abraham was going with him. All three of them were walking together. But again, Abraham talking to one. And he says, am I going to hide from my, uh, not child, servant, servant, what I want to do? And he was telling him that he's going to destroy Sodom. And Abraham is like, hey, his uh, uncle there, right? Uncle was there. Nephew. Nephew is there. He's going to die. He's like, are you going to destroy the whole Sodom? Because uh, if there's at least, what, 50 righteousness or something? He's like, no. If there's 20, 30, they went up to what? 50, 10 or 5? Down to that amount. And he's talking to him. They stayed to talk, but those two angels continue going forward. They went. And then uh, this person who talks to Abraham, this angel, he was, uh, he was acting as God. He says, I am the Lord. Am I going to hide this from you? This, this. He was acting as God. Who was that angel? Do you guys know who was that angel? And then they, the, the other two, they went to Sodom. And remember, Lord, he saw them. They came to Sodom, but the third one wasn't there. Also, when Abraham... I was bringing the Isaac, right, to, for sacri to sacrifice. Uh, he was about to kill him, right? And then angel of the Lord started talking to him and saying, I am the God. I am promising to bless you and everything else. So that angel uh, in the Old Testament, uh, it's Yahweh. It's the Jesus Christ before the New Testament. In New Testament, he came and appeared. He, he came to this earth. He, and that angel of the Lord, Yahuwah, was, was the one that was in Old Testament. In New Testament, you will not find it. It was Jesus Christ. And then the same, that angel of the Lord is Jesus who was leading the Israel people, right? He says, I am God. And, I was, I, and God says, Jesus says, I was leading them out. So he was, uh, in the Old Testament, it was Jesus. Just some, uh, I'll throw it there. So, angels in the New Testament, angels participate in the birth of Jesus Christ. Luke, Gabriel sent to Mary. Oh, and another thing, when people say, I command angels what to do. When Gabriel sent to Mary, what happened when she saw the angel? She, she, she was fear, right? The fear came on her. What happened to John? Uh, in Revelation, when he was on Patmos, right, on the islands, when he saw angels in the glory of God, what happened? He felt like he was dead. What happened to Isaiah when he saw angels? He fell. Uh, what happened to, uh, what's it called, not Joseph, but uh, the John Baptist was born of who was his father? Zechariah. What happened to Zechariah? He came in fear. But some people these days say, oh yeah, we come in angels. I say, you probably see the wrong angels. If you see heavenly angel, you come in fear. Because uh, reading the Bible. And you know what some other people told me? They're like, Yuri, do you pray like this? We pr when we pray for deliverance, we, tell pers we set person down on the chair and I, I, and I come in. Angel, you stay on the right and the other angel stay on the left and hold them. And we pray for deliverance. I say, where did you guys get that from? Oh, it works. I say, I don't know, I'm not going to try it. I don't see that in the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, don't, don't try it. Don't, don't bring those into, you can fall into heresy so fast. You know, enemy, yeah, will act, he'll act sometimes like it's working and stuff. And then you go too deep and you start commending and he's going to laugh at you later. Whatever, how God, we read in the Bible how God was casting out demons, how apostles were cast. This is how we serve, this is how we work in the name of Jesus. And we don't command angels what to do. And then a Joseph dream, right? Don't be afraid, take Mary. Uh, shepherds and angels, great joy. Angels in the dream of Joseph running. So uh, in the days of Christ on the earth, temptation in desert. 
And then angels came and supported him. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Resurrection. In the resurrection, ascension of Christ, angels rolled back the stone. Two men in white clothes uh, rose in their eyes. Two coming of Christ, uh, the coming of Christ, Christ about angels. Angels will separate the righteousness from unrighteousness. And then uh, the coming of Christ, all the angels. I think that's going to be such a blessing to see that. Imagine in Matthew chapter 25, I believe it's uh, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. So uh, imagine to see that picture of heaven filled with angels. And uh, the Lord is coming with His glory. May the Lord help us to be strong, to be ready, and uh, to accept our Christ that when He's going to come. Amen? We need, friends, we need to battle. We need to win. We need to go forward. There's some teachings. Maybe uh, we'll have a break, and then we can talk about that. It's, I think it's been an hour now. Maybe we'll have a little break, and then uh, we'll continue going forward. And if you have any questions, you guys uh, can ask me. Maybe let's do five, ten minutes questions right now, and then uh, we'll have a break, and then I'll continue. Do you have any questions right now? Yes. Yeah, that's in Genesis 6. Yeah. In Genesis 6, remember it says the people of God were going into the daughters of men. Remember that verse? And there was born the giants. So do you believe that man had relationship with the... I mean, angel had a relationship with the woman and something was born? You know, we can talk about that. We're not going to have enough time. But uh, by reading that, it talks about uh, Genesis chapter 4. Remember when, uh, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Adam and Eve, remember? They lost this relationship with the Lord. And they were dead spiritually. Because the, when Jesus Christ came, he says, like in Adam, you were dead. In Jesus Christ, you are resurrected. Remember? So that's why we have a relationship with the Lord in spirit. So the spirit is resurrected or born again. So they were dead in spirit, right? They disobeyed God. He kicked them out, out of the paradise, right? And in, Gen in Genesis chapter 4, it says that Seth was born, uh, Elijah, Elijah or something was born. And then they start calling on the name of the Lord. So this became again the, a man of God. And if you look at that word man, it's Bain, B-A-N-E in uh, Hebrew. It's Bain, or in Greek. Old Testament is written in Hebrew, yes. And so so in, in, uh, it's Bain, the word Bain. And when you look into the whole word of God in Old Testament, where God says, you are my children, you are my sons, he's using that same word Bain. You are my sons. So in other words, in the New Testament, you'll find this a lot. Those who believe in me, those who accepted me, they are called the Son of God. They call my children, right? So when you start serving the Lord, and in Genesis chapter 4, they start calling on the name of the Lord again. So they became again the sons of God. But there is also uh, Cain, right? Cain, Cain killed the Abel, right? Yeah, Cain. So Cain is departed. And it, it was a lot, a lot of years passed. So there was unbelievers, the daughters of men, and there's a man too, that they didn't believe God. So the daughters of man, that word, if you look into that, uh, I have, uh, maybe if you wanted to come after, or if we have time, I can show you those passages in the Old Testament, that same word, 
it explains who are the daughters of men. Those are sinners. Those were sinners, those that God didn't know. So what happens, remember God commanded them, don't take anybody else. It's you guys. Those who believe in me. Are wrong. So they start bringing daughters of men, unbelievers in other words, mixing with Christianity. And it got so perverted in that same chapter, chapter 6. It says that everybody got perverted again. Everybody left God again. Sin, 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 sin. And they got so bad. In that chapter, that's when only Noah left. Noah, right? That built the ark. Yeah, only Noah and his family was saved. Only them who stayed the son of God. Sons. Only them. That's what happened. So it's not talking about, uh, it's not talking about the angels having an inner code with the woman and they were and then something was born, right? Then it's gonna. It, 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 then uh, God will probably, when He speaks to them, He says, in that chapter, He says, your now your days or man or human should not be. It's gonna be shortened to 120 days. I think it's in verse three, third verse. It talks about that. So God didn't say have demon, have man, right? And plus, you cannot mix. Spirit is spirit, human is human. Fish is fish, dog is dog. You cannot mix dog with the human or with the fish or <laughs> it's not going to work. Or with the spirit. Spirit is spirit. And then that's why in Matthew, uh, what verse I read it before, that Jesus Christ was explaining to them that the angels, the spirit, they don't produce, they don't get married. Yeah, it, it's not going to work. Angels, it's, called, it's also called the sons of God. Yes, there are so many names. I have it here. I can uh, maybe open it up to you once. Angels are the last. There's a rank, right? Three top ones. It's seraphim, cherubs, and I believe, uh, not authorities, something else. But I have it here. Thrones. They're by the throne. They're holding the throne. Cherubs, right, with the wings. And they're the only one with the wings. Angel, if you see a picture, you saw a picture. You cannot find in the Bible angel with the wings. And the people that I talked to, those who saw angel, this is just a white person, white appearance. And then uh, only seraphims, cherubs, and uh, they had wings. But in the Bible, you cannot find angel with the wing. So there's the wings, right, three. And then there's authorities, powers, principalities, right? Powers. It's all the names for the angels. And then there's a mar archangel. And then there's the angels. Messengers. Just fulfilling God's will. God has everything organized in authority. Same thing with the enemy. That's why when I'm, this is after the break, we're going to talk about uh, who we fight with. And what's the authorities. That's why the devil has authorities too. Ranks. Yeah, so if some, yeah, in the Bible, sometimes it says angel, it's just a messenger. So that's why sometimes people call, oh, yeah, God, you went and did something for somebody? And it's like, well, God sent me an angel. And they're actually not wrong. That's what it means. It's a messenger. If God uses you and sends you somewhere, it's like an angel. That's the same word, same word. It's a messenger, angel. And then, uh, and then in the Bible, you will find angels called same word called spiritual angel and the people as a messenger. It translates messenger. That's it. Yeah. So in the spiritual world, there's angels, God's messengers. Let's, let's put it this way. In the spiritual world, right, God sends messengers to serve you. And in the physical world, there's also messengers. Say that way. Yes. Yeah, my dad-in-law, uh, when he when the church was falling apart, he came home. He was sitting, and he got like so disappointed, worried about the church, and he, then he felt the presence of God, 
He looked to the side, and in the full height of the door, white person was standing there in the presence of God. And he spoke to him, I brought you a message that the church will continue, this, this would happen, and it did happen. Uh, we had a minister in Sacramento uh, where they're going to bless him as a pastor, but he was an ex-drug addict, and he went through the center, he was serving, and he was in the ministry, and uh, some churches were like, hey, you guys want to ordain drug addict? We said, he's not a drug addict. He's our brother. He's a minister now. God changed him. And when God forgives, he never reminds. He's a new creation. And some church, some people were like, st start calling him, some ministers from different churches, and start telling him, you cannot be pastor. You cannot minister. And when he was so doubting, and he was in this confusion, he said he went to with his wife. It was on, uh, who's from Sacramento, you guys, I think it was on medicine. There was in and out. He went to an in and out, and he says he was sitting with his wife. Maybe I forgot a couple of things, but I'll tell you how I remember. He was telling me. And then he was sitting with his wife, and then he said, saw a man came into in and out, and, came, and then he was asking for a taxi for them to call him. And when he heard the price or something, he's like, oh, I don't have those money. But the brother said, when he came into the in and out, he said, inside of me, I felt something like burning, like, I need to help this. I need to something, something spiritual. He said, I felt that presence. Sometimes you will feel it sometimes. And then uh, as soon as he said that I don't have money to pay, he told his wife, wait for me here. He got up and he came to, came to him. I'm, I'll take you where, you where you needs to. He says, okay. So he got into his car. He's driving. And he turns to him and said, um, I think I'm praising, I'm praising God that you, hear, you heard his voice. And now I want to tell you, the ordination that they want to bless you for the pastor, it's from the Lord. He sent me to tell you this, and he passed the message to him, encouraged him. And then they went, I think, into Target market, uh, parking lot. It was at night, no cars. He said, uh, he's like, drop me off here. He dropped him off, turned around, and he, he wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, so with me, I uh, got protected me a couple times, and specifically to see Angel, I didn't, but I felt it times and uh, his protection he there there and I think somebody seen it over me in one of the protection but uh, enemy yes dark spirits I did see it. I trying to scare me attack me and they tried but uh, God will only allow it when you're ready he also is the Lord the father knows your heart knows what you're going to if you're ready you're there to God will teach you and he will allow it and I will explain a little bit about that how God teaches anything else They're not eternal being. It means they were created. God is internal, right? He was there always. But there, it's they're not internal beings because they were created. They came out of something. Yeah, God created them. But then uh, the Bible says that they will all burn in a lake of fire, the demons. But the angels gonna be with us there yeah. for the for the rest of the life, <laughs> life or internal. Yes. Yeah, that's how I believe. That's what the Bible teaches us. It's the fallen angels. Yeah, yeah. They can even appear sometimes in the light, right? It says the Bible says the when Paul was saying, don't believe even uh, if somebody teaches you something else that what I taught you, don't believe in that. Even if the angel appears as a light, they can even take that form. Yeah, that's it. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, like I, I said in the beginning a little bit, but uh, there is a, yes, of course, there is a practical way. Be ready. Uh, see, when you're, uh, let's do that. I'll explain a little bit more after the break about that, how God teaches you and prepares you. You can't be a warrior right away, right? And in the, in the spiritual world, there's also different ranks. God's not going to put you to fight against the prince of Persia right away. The demon that's responsible for the whole Iran, right? He's not going to put you there. You're not ready. He's going to have to, he equipped you, yes, but he needs to prepare you. Yes, there's a little demons that run in the, on the streets and everywhere, right? right? Maybe you can 
deal with those sometimes or start with that. Uh, God, you felt that, wow, I can do this. Well, hold on. You know, don't be in a rush. The first, the, uh, I, te- I, I advise people, I teach people, I de- I, and I'm telling it to myself, don't go look for it. You know, the, our one thing, number one thing, is to have a relationship with the Lord, to serve Him, to bring gospel to others, to tell them about the truth, to tell them about the Lord. And if it runs in your way, you have a full right to pray over it, to cast it out. Even in a, I remember in Mexico, when we first started in Mexico, we would do evangelism, and then the, the person comes to the front, start manifesting, we all start praying for him and everything. And then the gospel stopped. And then after a couple of those prayers, we're like, hold on. Enemy is trying to distract us. Why are we here? To run after them? Or we, brought, we came here to bring the gospel? We're like, brothers, let's preach and bring the gospel. And the person comes and starts manifesting. A few brothers or sisters with them, take him to the side and, and pray for him. But we'll continue preaching about the Lord. Bring the gospel. Because everything stops, people are, everybody's watching, and we're not there to do the show, in other words. But if reverence in your way, yes, there's a way to pray. There's a, we'll talk about that at the end, remind me if I miss that, but we'll talk about that. Let's take a break, 10-minute break, and then we'll continue. One of the most important things is to, to stay clean. And uh, if you were part of any, if you were part of any witchcraft, any cults, any fortune telling, fortune telling, right? Your Snapchat, anything, there's, hey, take a picture of your uh, hand, we'll tell you your future, all this stuff. It's all spiritual things that you opening the doors and you being involved where you have to renounce it. Renounce it in the name of Jesus, yes. I don't know that one. But I know uh, even Charlie, Charlie, they play in school, right? They're calling the demons, Charlie, the pencils start moving, the Bloody Mary, and then all those other things. You guys know, uh, uh, some of you don't maybe, but a lot of youth kids in school, they're trying to push a lot of things. Uh, this is a, don't be part of any non-biblical or any witchcraft, because that's where you open the door. This is something you have to renounce. Uh, you can do it with the minister, you can do it, it uh, depends on, on you, because I, I, I'm a witness myself with so many people when they renounce, even sometimes it was uh, deep, where they uh, start manifesting, sometimes it's just, they renounced it and uh, God forgave them, they move forward, not everything's good, they're protected. So, uh, may the Lord bless us, of course, to stay clean, that's the main important thing. For an example, right, how does a uh, fortune teller work? How does the spiritual world work sometimes? So uh, enemy, he's uh, trying to send his unclean spirits everywhere he can. They have orders. They have orders to destroy your life, to lie to you, to do this, this, this. When a fortune teller, like when you, how do they know sometimes your past and they predict your future? And you, it happens and it works. Another thing is can they read your mind? Can the Satan read your mind? What do you guys think? Huh? Yeah, no? No. Huh? Only the thoughts? I think he can if you allow him. If you don't allow him, if you have faith, you're protected. He cannot read your mind. So Satan cannot read your mind. So then how those those fortune tellers, they read your mind? Hey, you're thinking this and this right now. You're like, whoa, how did you know? Yes, I was thinking. So what happens is when you go into the fortune teller, let's say it's a lady, right? You come to their place. First of all, you came to their place. That's their place. That's the wrong step you did. Then when you came to that place, that means you, uh, you start talking to her and she's doing something, right? She starts doing something. It's like, oh, this, this, this happened in your life. So she's connecting with the spirit that responsible, evil spirit that responsible for your life. Like I told you before, Satan is organized. He has demons that knows your life. They're responsible to know your information. She's connecting with that demon. He tells her all the information. And she's like, 
oh yeah, you had this, this in your life, and you're like, whoa, you start believing her. As soon as you believe her, you open your mind. And she's like, now you're thinking this, this, this. You're like, whoa, again, she got you on the hook. First, you think you came in there, in, in there uh, to them. Second one, you believed in her. And when you believe, they, it works through the faith too, but different faith. <laughs> and you open the doors, you allow. And now she's, and then she'll predict, you, you now you believe her, you know she's right. And now, knowing your life, knowing what you struggle with, she predicts your life and saying, Is this, at this age and stuff, you're going to fall off the bridge or you're going to die at the age of 40, let's say, and you're 20 right now. And you're like, whoa, and you believed it. So when you come out of the place, you come on, coming out with a whole bunch of demons that's going to lead you to that. And you will make it and you will do it. You believed it, you allowed it, they came out with you, they're going to lead you to that and it's going to happen because you believed it. So that's why if you've been part of any witchcraft or anything, renounce that. And it's not going to happen. He's a liar of liars. And sometimes he'll lie to a person. They'll lie, they predict. It's not even true, but they predict it and you believed it. Then it's going to start happening. You allow the enemy to, uh, uh, to lead you to that. So that's why we're Christians. We don't believe him. We believe the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Remember that. He's a liar of liars. He lies and it will never happen. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll give you something, but he's going to take much more back. A lot of stars, you guys hear it yourself, right? They dedicate their life to who? They say it publicly. I sold my soul to devil. That's how they became rich. And then you see they're dying early or overdose or anything else. Yes, he's give you a lot, and then he's going to use you. And then what do they sing, some of them? And they, hold, they lead whole, uh, every, a lot of stadium of people singing with them. I sell my soul right to the devil, all this, this, and they're all repeating. So while Satan can use them, he's going to use them. But when he's done with them, he's going to destroy them. So there is no connection, nothing with the enemy. We have no we have nothing to do with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get away. Don't talk. Don't believe. Sometimes we pray with people. I had this experience when a demon threw a person telling me, oh, he has no, this brother has no right. He didn't call brother. And they say, he, he has no right to pray for me. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord rebuke you. We continue praying. But I'm not listening to it. Sometimes they were right. Sometimes they were wrong. But after the prayer, I remember one time I came to the brother and I said, do you have a sin? He's like, no, no, everything's good. I said, okay. A week later, he comes to me and he says, yeah, yeah, I, I sinned. He watched something and then he did something. It was a sin. And they knew why he came to pray for me. You, you are in my trap. I, the trap I put in the internet, you were watching it. And then you were doing a sin. You were in my trap. Why you came to cast me out? You know? So uh, we have to be clean, we have to be strong. So that's why the Lord is teaching us to put, to put the whole armor of God. Let's open up Ephesians chapter 6. It's very good uh, verses that talks about how to be a warrior. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 and down. Uh, that's how God is going to be equipping you, equipping you with the armor of God. And, stuff. and He's going to teach you. He's going to lead you. You know, uh, God, uh, like I told you before, God was teaching us. And then uh, I had very good experience with the brothers that I pray with. We started with uh, like a 14-year girl that came uh, and then she needed for deliverance. We prayed a lot of hours. God was teaching us a lot with her. And then she never got delivered because at the end she opened up. She's like, oh, yeah, I like you guys praying for me because I like attention. Like, hey. <laughs> you know, and then... Uh, I don't want to get freedom because um, I like this attention that enemy gives me because the guys, uh, I get attention from the guys. It's easy for me to attract the guys and enemy helps me. I want you guys to deliver those who torture me, but leave that one. <laughs> I was like, it's not going to happen. So she left. After about a year later, 
God already taught us a lot, supported us, give us more strength, faith, equip us with the whole armor of God. We become stronger in the Lord, right? More faith and everything. You become stronger warrior. And then same lady that we were holding before, like six people, six men. I, I will hold one hand and she will lift me. 14 year old. That's how enemy, there was a lot of in her, was a lot of enemy, uh, unclean spirits was in her. And then, uh, and then she will jump into the window, we will catch her. I remember one time she went, uh, she ran into the kitchen, first time in the house, opened a drawer with where the knives are, grabs the knife and tries to stab her. So we have to catch her, take the knife away. I remember I grabbed her once, she went inside, grabbed the metal and tried to poke me. I catch her hand, like this kind of things. And we were so tired, it's in the beginning, God was teaching us. And then God taught us, we're not holding a person anymore. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to sit, not to manifest. And that's it, he sits there, he roars, but he's not running away. Uh, but that's when God is going to equip, equip you more with the armor of God. And then uh, that she comes again with her mom, after a year about, we sit down. As soon as we start praying, she gets up and starts running. And we're not running after her. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, stop. And then she probably took off maybe 20 feet. And she's like, went like this, stop, boom, on her uh, hands and knees. And I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, come back and sit down. She'll turn around, roaring, climbing back. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, and sit down. And then she started yelling. It's not her. The demon threw her, started yelling, I don't need your help. And the brother that was with me praying, he's like, you don't need help, but she needs, and he names the name, she needs help. And, and she's like, turned to me like this, this. Did I say that name? No? <laughs> she called me nigga. This nigga never uh, picks up the phone when I call. I was like, okay. Uh, now I, I was like, I knew who's calling me. What happens is, uh, whenever I was in like uh, strong prayer for deliverance, when we pray for deliverance, my phone will start ringing from her. She was in a different city, nonstop. I have to put the phone away, nonstop, call, call, call. Or whenever I take a deep confession, when we're doing a confession with somebody, my phone will start ringing from her. And I knew it's not her, it's something through her. Uh, this is the battle sometimes we face. I, I brought example uh, in our church. Maybe we'll get to the part, part, but I'll say it right now. It was here in San Antonio. When uh, I was talking about the uh, Prince of Persia, right? Maybe we'll touch that subject about Daniel. And I explained, we were saying, uh, I was telling there that we didn't have live stream, nothing. I was saying how we can, uh, we need to have this, we have to be armor, to have this armor of God, to withstand. And then I say, we will go through this battle with the sinners, church, there will be center, there will be church, right? Explaining the spiritual battle. I just did the sermon in church. And that evening, a guy from Washington calls me at night and uh, cussing and saying, you think you know everything? How, you think you have a right to tell people about that? And then threatening me and he says I will come to San Antonio I'll find you and I'll shoot you and I knew it wasn't him so I put up uh, uh, in the morning when I call him back I say so uh, his name was Mike Mike what happened sorry sorry brother it wasn't me I say yeah I know it wasn't you so it's enemy that's how the enemy knows and he doesn't want you guys to know see what enemy doesn't want you to know that you have authority over him you are the children of God so you have authority over devil, not just power. He just wants you to know, you have power, I have power. But you have authority. What's authority? Let's bring Tim Baluk. He's not here, right? In premier, in example. Tim Baluk and Yulia, right? Yulia. It's Julie, right? No? What's your name? Julie. I mean, who's stronger, Julie or <laughs> Serge? Huh? <laughs> right? Search. But if she was a queen, and then uh, she has all the authority, and search just a soldier, he comes in and she's the queen. She's like, hey, get him out of here. 
he will be out. This is authority. Or the cops. No matter how big or small is the cop, when he pulls you over, he has authority over you. You will obey. <laughs> but this is authority. So enemy doesn't want you to know that you have authority over him. See, don't compare devil to God. There is no comparison. God is creator and devil is only creation. He's just a creation and he obeys God. He follows his rules. He will not overstep those rules. Не обожествляйте, как это in English. Huh? Don't think he's something like God. Nothing close. Let's bring an example of Job. Remember when he talks to, uh, Satan talks to God. And God told him, did you see uh, my servant Job? Yeah, you protected him from all the side. You told me not to touch it. I cannot touch it. Yeah, you put protection. I can do not do anything. And then he's like, allow me. And what God told him, okay, I allow you to take everything from him, but don't touch him. See, he follows only what he allowed. He took everything from him, but he didn't touch him. And then God says, okay, I now I allow you to touch him, but don't kill him. Don't take his soul. He touched him, body with the sickness, but he couldn't kill him. So we, uh, even the Satan, he's in control. God is in control of everything. Amen. Huh? It, it, what God allows to do, why? To bless him more. He was testing him. And then what happened? He passed that test. God blessed him more. So in your life, in your ministry, you will go through tests. Some people are saying, oh, it's not my ministry. They started with the joy. They started with the happiness. But then they're like, okay, it's not mine. I think I make a mistake. No, you're making a mistake. Yeah, right now. You're making it, but God didn't make a mistake. When you're serving the Lord and you start any ministry, the, I know it's the hardest one, but you have to wait upon the Lord. You have to wait for God to lead you all the way and be faithful. Not just to sit there, but to seek the Lord, to fulfill it, to do everything you can from your side, to serve the Lord, and He will do the rest. I know it's the hardest one is sometimes to wait, but God is not doing a mistake. I have people coming to me, oh, God opened up to me to, to go there. And a month later, he comes, oh, God opened up for me to go there. I said, I don't want to serve that God that you serve. What do you mean? He said, my God doesn't do mistakes. If he brought me here, I'm going to be here. And if he wants me to move somewhere, he'll do it. That I will live. You will live in glory. You will live in peace. Everybody will agree. And that's how God works. If he puts you into any ministry, he allows it. This is where the hardship will come. Hard times will come. I, sometimes a lot of times I bring the sinners as an example, right? Because it's easier. Some people, because sinners doesn't get mad. <laughs> you know, they, so sometimes I, if I bring somebody else as an example, then why are you bringing my example, right? This, and a lot of times in the center with the leaders, you know, something comes up, no, I'm ready to go, I'm going to do this, this. Brother, no, it's not time, wait. And those I see who's been faithful, but it's not, it wasn't easy for them. It was, it's not easy, but they overcome, the, and I see them grow. And a lot of them I see in the ministry right now. I can start naming you guys a lot. Yeah, even in our church. Brother Vlad, Roma, Tim Babich, and, then, and we can go on and on and on. Those people were faithful. They, you think they didn't have temptation? You think they're like, hey, how, long, how much longer? No, faithful. And God will always bring you up and, and provide and give it to you. So back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It was written by Paul in jail. Do you guys know, right? He was writing this when he was in jail in Rome. And when he looked at the soldiers with all this harness, he started bringing an example. Uh, and, then, uh, and he approaches believers as the soldiers of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, he's not, and it's interesting, here in chapter 6, verse 10, he's not just asking to put the armor of God. He commanding, put the whole armor of God. Only then you can win. Because imagine you have, have just a shield, but not the sword. 
you're protecting, protecting, protecting yourself. How, how much longer are you going to protect? You're going to get tired. You need something to strike with. But uh, how many armor of God are there in the soldier? Who remembers? The shield, right? The helmet, the sword, and shoes, and belt. Six. Right? Breastplate. So six all together. But there's a seventh one. And what is the seventh one? Huh? It, it's in chapter, I think it's in verse 18. In the verse 18, it's a praying in spirit. Praying in spirit is like a sword. Not a sword. Spirit. It's like a spirit. You attack the enemy before he even comes to you. When you're praying in spirit, because he says, always pray in spirit down there. You're attacking the enemy because the spirit interceding for you knowing ahead of time. You're attacking the enemy and breaking his plans ahead of time. You're attacking him uh, before he even comes. But if he comes closer with faith, you have a word of God to strike him, right? So um, the more fruits, of course, the more attack. But then the more you know Jesus Christ, the more you become stronger. If you, a lot of ministers probably experience that. The more you do for the Lord, you feel more attack. No. And then how our brother was preaching today, oh, it's probably hard for Yuri, right? I said, it's blessed. <laughs> it's blessed. Because before I even saying, uh, my brother died at age 18, right? A car accident. And then, and then I've been saying till this, uh, I don't know, till when, maybe a few, three, four, five years ago, I stopped. But I've been saying that hey, it's even better for him. He's in heaven. He doesn't have to go through all this, living in this earth. It's nice for him. He's in a better place. But now I'm not saying that. I'm saying it differently. I'm thanking my Lord that he allowed me to stay and to serve him. So when I come to heaven, I don't come with the empty hands. I come with the glory of God. I want to be the closest to the Lord. I want to be on the throne, next to the throne, right? Or on the throne. God says you will be on the throne. Those who uh, specifically serve the Lord, we are, we, we're going to get saved, right? Those who believe in God, they get saved. I mean, but then also there's going to be a judgment day, right? What is it called? Pristola. Uh, I forgot the name in English. But there will be that judgment. Everybody's going to receive their own glory of God or reward I would say I want to be I want to have this reward <laughs> and I'm thanking the Lord that he allowed me to be part of this ministry because through the ministry I know him more in my life I never knew that you can live and not not to be afraid and you're not afraid to die I never even thought it's possible but when you're closer with the Lord in my life right now I'm not afraid to die I didn't know it was possible but with the Lord, it's possible. Then you know everything is in His hands. Remember I some, to some people I testified when I had a gun in Mexico on me a couple times? In that moment, I still clearly remember. You know without God's will, He's not going to press that trigger. You know you are in His hands and your days are numbered. You're going to know that. This is the faith. This is the joy you have in Christ. So uh, let's start from the verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Your spiritual and physical strength is only in the Lord with unlimited resources in His power. So finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This is where you can be strong, is in the Lord. And the Paul also tells 2 Timothy uh, 2 1, he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the uh, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. This is where you're gonna be strong in, is in Jesus Christ. You need to be in, of course, in the relationship with the Lord, uh, in prayers, fasting, though in the word of God, you need all that, the truth. How can you fulfill words of God if you don't know the word of God? You need to know the word of God. And I, I really like what David was telling Solomon before he died. It's in 1 King chapter uh, 2, verse 2 to 3. 1 King 2, 2 to 3. I go the way, this is David, who was the, by the heart of God, right? Telling his son Solomon, this is who was, who was close with the Lord. Look what he's saying. I go 
the way of the uh, of all the earth be strong therefore and prove yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his way to keep his status his commandments his judgment and his testimonies I mean as it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper and all that you do wherever you turn when are you gonna prosper when you abide in his word and you fulfill his commandment right uh, also we know God was telling Joshua if you read chapter 1 Joshua he commanded him three times he says uh, be strong and courageous right and then he says I command you to be strong and courageous and then he explains to him be abide in my word so you will not make a mistake and you will choose the right path and you will be successful in your life is when you fulfill the God's commandment and then the second commandment of Paul when uh, he was looking at the Roman soldiers right it's a chapter uh, Ephesians 6 11 put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so uh, also in uh, it's the same word Puran it's a in doing in Greek it's clothed with it's that word and that same word Jesus Christ uses in Luke 24 49 it said Jesus is using the same word clothed with when he talks about the promise of the Holy Spirit Luke 24 49 behold I send the promise of my father upon you but stay in the city of Jerusalem until you are in due with the power from a height so it talks about the Holy Spirit with the whole it's a power that needs you have to be equipped with uh, that's why in Acts chapter 1 Jesus says in being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father which he said you have heard from me and we know in chapter 2 when they receive it Peter with the boldness he went up he started preaching and did, he wasn't afraid of anything he was equipped with this whole armor of God it was completion It's the boldness that gives God gives in spirit so uh, when uh, so we need a, a Holy Spirit to stand against the wiles of the devil wiles what is wiles it's the same road it's uh, translates to the same road nothing new Satan is using the same road he, he used before he's using again uh, to get people off the road or to lead them to the wrong way and devil is Diablos it uh, translates in his uh, to his job description and uh, mode of operation so his uh, translates to he came to attack not once but again and again and again this is who he is this is his job uh, description this is who he is is to attack again again and again so you, maybe one time you overcame the second he's tried the second time he's tried the third time so which is the last problem of this world is the most right he's trying to attack the people with and then uh, with the sickness unbelief uh, doubts judgment and we can continue that list he'll try to attack you with this again again and again but you have to overcome again again and again and you will uh, come stronger and stronger and stronger the more I overcome things the more tests I have to go through the more sacrifice I have to go through the stronger I become and it's it's interesting that since that I was battling before like seems like you cannot overcome them when you're stronger in the Lord you look at those things they're nothing they're not even bothering you something new so in the Lord when you grow it's like falling away from you you become stronger it's like that tree you know you like that you become a, before you was a wavy tree small one but when you become like a big oak tree you're strong nobody can not everybody can wave you <laughs> they'll hurt themselves against you right that's how sometimes we become stronger in the Lord uh, so and then in verse 12 he explains who we fight against so remember Paul is in a jail he's looking at the soldier 
and he bringing his soldiers an example to us who we fight against. And then in verse 12, he says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, in the heavenly places, in the heaven. So we know there's still somebody in the heaven, right? Heavenly places, first heaven, it's not, we see, not God's heaven. So uh, this is who we fight against. Uh, wrestle, trans, uh, in Hebrew, in, no, in Greek, it's pali. Pali, so the word pali translates to wrestle, fight, or struggle. If God says here, I, I mean, uh, if Paul says here again, 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 it means this is very important. But let's get to uh, wrestle. So he says, D -d we do not wrestle against. So the wrestle translates is to fight, struggle, wrestle. When Paul, Paul was telling them wrestle, right, they all knew exactly what he was talking about. Because in the heart of the, every major city in Greek, there was a place or a building called Palestra. And there was three sports in that building. Let's say this is a building, Palestra. In every Greek in that moment, they had those buildings, or arena, we'll say. And in that building, there was, uh, there was a sport. There, uh, there was three sports, boxing, wrestling, and the third one is pancreation. Even if you Google it right now, you'll see a picture, two guys wrestling. Usually, they were naked at that time in that battle. And then, uh, and then they knew exactly what he was talking about. Because pancreation, the last one, was the most danger sport or the fight uh, that when they fight because either one lives or one dies. They fight till they uh, overcome. So uh, first was boxing. They will see who wins. Then wrestling. And the last one is pancreation. Is, uh, they fight till one dies and one lives. It was, there was like, it was a bad, I researched it, and it's confirmed. They will fight, like they will, the most uh, dangerous one was if he grabs you in the back, and he picks you up and shake you, break your back right here, then you get paralyzed. They will uh, uh, hit you, so no gloves. You fight with the tooth will fly out, heat, you know, and then uh, everything else, like they will break arms, they will break hands, and then uh, till one die, I mean one wins. So, and then this is where Paul is bringing them example. And they knew exactly what he was talking about. So our fight is not against flesh and blood. Because there was blood, blood flying out there's, in that fight. He's like, no, this is not how we fight. We're not fighting uh, humans. Uh, but, and then um, same thing with the enemy, Satan. He has no mercy. So uh, that's why we have to fight back. Because it's either he wins or we win. That's where Paul says our fight is not against about principality, powers. He starts listing. So either you win or they win. Every one of us is battling. And we will battle. And we will face those authorities. Either you win or they win. And you can win. With the Lord, you can win. It, and then when it says against, like pro, pros, it, in Greek it's pros, P-R-O-S, against. When it says for time, it means really important for us to pay attention. And this pros translates a very close encounter or face to face. So when you, Paul says, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It means face to face against principalities. You will face that. Against powers, against evil hosts, it's face to face. This word, word against, pros, translates to face to face. So we in our life, we are facing this. We can't, run, we can't run away from it. That's why he's saying we need to be equipped with the whole armor of God to withstand that. Or you're going to lose. How many of us lost? We were holding, holding, holding ourselves and then we sinned. We were holding, holding ourselves and then we got discouraged. Well, because you lost right there. You couldn't withstand them. That's why we need this whole armor of God to withstand those. And when you face this, and then uh, in Mark chapter 16, there's a good example. It says, those who believe in the Lord, they will cast out demons. They will. 
the weapon has been given to you, but you need to learn how to use it. And this is where a good example when uh, Andre was asking how we do it. When can we do it? God will teach you how to fight. He will teach you. He's your father. Because when we just believe in Christ, we're just beginners. It's like a kid's. But then you are youth, then you are father, you're strong. And then at sea, right? Uh, in a very good example in Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 and 18, when uh, God was leading out Israel people from Egypt, what happened? Where were they? They were in slavery, right? Did they have weapons? No, they didn't. They were slaves. They were tortured. And that's when they were crying out to God and let us out, let us out from this. Same thing happens with us. When we are in this world, when we are in the yoke of the devil or binded with the chains of this world, we are crying to God. We're in the slavery of Satan. And we're crying and saying, God, forgive us, save us, I accept you. And God brings you out of this slavery. slavery. That's what happened to them there. When it says, when they came out out of the slavery, I'm not going to read here. It says that in chapter 18, it says that they came out harnessed with the weapons, equipped with the weapons. But God didn't lead them through Philistines. He says, because if they're going to see them, the Philistines were warriors. But the people of Israel, they come out of the uh, slavery with the weapons, they took the weapons, remember, from the Egyptians. But they don't know how to use it. They're afraid. They don't have practice. So that's why God says, didn't let them through Philistines. He let them through the sea. But right there at the sea, remember what happened? Pharaoh went after them. They forgot about their weapon. <laughs> they start crying and saying, oh, we're going to die here. Why you brought us here? They didn't know how to use it. That's how it happens with us sometimes. We, yes, we came to the Lord, we repent, He equipped us with the whole armor of God, and now He wants, He's going to teach you, He's allowing little bit by little bit for you to, He doesn't put you to fight with, the, with some authorities right away, little by little bit, with little temptations, overcome, that's how we grow in God, and if we stop growing, we're going to lose, we need to continue, continue, continue growing in the Lord, become stronger, you don't want to be, you want to be the warrior, right, that God can trust. He's not going to do it for you all the time. He wants you to do it. He wants you to go and fight. He wants you to overcome. He wants you to bring people to Christ, right? So, uh, and then uh, you need the armor of God to withstand the evil day. 13, Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. There, before we read to be equipped with the whole armor of God. Now, after explaining this, he says, now, that's why I'm telling you, take, out the, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. Okay, evil day. What is evil day? Everything was good, and then out of nowhere, there's a problem. Out of nowhere, I lost money. Out of, out of nowhere, I got sick. Out of nowhere... I don't, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Out of nowhere, I'm tired. Out of nowhere, I want to give up on everything. This is the evil day. And then to withstand that, you need the whole armor of God. I have a very good example how I withstand that. When I came home once, it was, uh, I was in the center for uh, a lot of time, three days in a row, in the men's center when we just started here. And then uh, I would come home late, late, late. I was at home all day and then come home late. Everybody's sleeping. My wife is sleeping. Kids are sleeping. In the morning, I'm gone. I come again late. <laughs> and on the third day, when I come, I, I walk into the room and I see my wife just looking at the ceiling like this. And I was like, whoa, something's wrong. And inside, I heard a voice, go pray. So I went into the room. I locked myself. And the playroom is far away, other side of the house. I start praying. And God showed me. How enemy rose an army against my wife. I saw the whole army of the devil. And at the same time, God is speaking to me and saying, but you have more authority and power, even if the whole hell go against you, you have more authority from me. 
and such a boldness and strength came. I raised my hands and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I said, and I forbid you to touch my wife. I renounce, I command you to leave her. I break all your power, your authorities. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. And then I start praying. And the glory came and my tears were coming down. Victory came. When I went into my room, I walk into the room. I'm not saying anything. My wife gets up. I'll be back. She went to pray. After the prayer, she comes out, hugging me, joyful. I say, what happened? She said, the enemy deceived me. He, she accepted the thoughts that the center is more important for me than the family. The center is more important for me than my wife. And that's how the enemy tried to attack. And she accepted. And she, was go she says, I was going into depression. And then after you went to pray, you, you went away, and then you come back, Something flipped, and she got up and went to pray, and I told her what happened. So this is the, so you need to have this whole armor of God to withstand all these evil days out of nowhere. See, this is when we are Christians, and you're going to be in the ministry. Guys, don't ever give up. There's going to be those times, good times. When everything is good, that's when people relax. That's what the enemy likes. He, think, he wants you to think everything's good. He's going to be slowly attacking you, attacking you, attacking you, attacking you, until he's ready to attack you hardly, where you're not going to survive. You're not going to sorry, You'll survive, but you're not going to withstand. So we, we, that's why uh, God was telling the Israel people, he told Moses to tell the nation of Israel, when they're going to go into this promised land, and they're going to have houses, they're going to have money, Tell them not to forget about me. It's easy to forget about the Lord when everything is good. When there's a problem, people cry out to God. They come to God. So very important to remember when everything is good, continue growing in God. Continue seeking His name. Continue stay in, uh, in, the battle, in the strength, in, in, like, in, in the seating, in prayers, because then you can overcome more. You can battle more. And God will use you more and He will lead you. Even Jesus Christ had that. Remember when he was, uh, when devil, uh, after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, he was, he was taken to the wilderness, and he was tempted there. There was those evil days. But after that, when he overcame the Satan, right, he tried to tempt him three times, right? Yeah, bow to me, I'll give you all my kingdom and everything else. Or jump from this temple. And then uh, after that, he won the battle. What happened? It says he came out filled with the Holy Spirit, and the miracles start happening. So every battle, when you fall into any battle, guys, remember, God is allowing something. Overcome. Stay faithful. Wait upon the Lord. It's okay. We have to. After every night, there's going to be a day. After every rain, there's going to be a sun, right? <laughs> Those days will pass, but stay strong. That's when you become stronger. And then the overcoming, and God will send angels to protect you, to comfort you, and to bless you. It's like, sometimes it's like, you know, attacks of the enemy, it's like a waves. Sometimes it's like attack, wave, then it's okay. Then it's a wave, then it's okay. And by you as a soldier, no matter what happens. That's why Paul says, I learn how to be faithful when there's money, when there's no money, when there's hardship, when there's not. I'm the same. That's what God, uh, the Lord liked about him. Uh, the example about the disciples. Uh, in Mark 4, 36 and 41, very good example, where he told them, Jesus Christ, don't be afraid. Don't worry. What do you mean, God? Not to worry. Our boat is sinking. And it says there, it's, uh, verse, uh, in um, Mark 4, 36 to 41, I'm not going to read it, but it says there arose something, padnalas. Ginamai uh, in Greek, it translates out of the blue, not expected, out of nowhere. What happened when they were, they were professional fishermen, disciples. They knew the sea very good. And it says when the, Jesus Christ, let's go to another side of the uh, sea, right? They knew everything is fine. They know the sea. They're professional fishermen. They got into the boat. Jesus fell asleep. They're floating. And it says right here, this word arose 
out of nowhere, the storm came. The waves started raising up, started floating into the boats. And look what Jesus Christ uh, told them. Uh, what did he tell them? He's like, when he woke up, he rebuked the wind. He didn't tell anything about to the waves. See, God knew something behind it. And where they were going, enemy knew where they're going. Because there is a demon-possessed person is going to be waiting for them with a legion of demons inside. And the enemy knew he's going to lose this guy. So he rose, he starts rose in the wind against them out of nowhere. Jesus Christ didn't pay attention on the waves that disciples were paying attention on. He rebuked the wind. Something behind it. I forbid you. And everything come. And when they came to that other place of the sea, what happens? The demon runs to them with the legion and then uh, asks them not to, uh, not to torture him. And uh, Oh, one thing he said, don't, uh, don't send us to abyss. What is abyss? It's another place where, pe where demons are locked, and I think where Satan is going to be locked for a thousand years. You cannot get out of there. Abyss. And, he's like, the, and the demons were asking, don't send us to abyss. Let us go into the pigs. Why into the pigs? Huh? For Israel people, that was a sin for Jewish people to have pigs, to eat pig. They know where to go. They allow. That's the sin. <laughs> he allowed them. They stay. And they say, you came before time. But, in the, I think in other words, and another thing is that the Lord showed them. He showed them the power and, and how many people can, I mean, how many demons can be in one person. About 6,000, right? It was in that person. I remember we were praying with one lady. It was three legions. That was a big battle. And the prayer, I'll tell you the power of prayers. So we're praying for her. And then uh, I step away to the side. I press the voxer that we used. And I uh, ask our prayer warriors. We had a group. Can you guys pray right now? We're praying for deliverance. I'm saying it in Russian. And she's American. And then I stepped away to the side. And brothers are praying. And she's manifesting, yelling. And I, I left a message to pray. I come back. And she turns around to me. Tell them to stop praying. I see those prayers rising to heaven. <laughs> Tell them to start, stop praying. This is the power of prayer. This is the power of prayer. So um, we need to be uh, ab obedience, abide in this. Remember when uh, Peter was walking on water, what happened? He looked at those waves and he got scared. And he started drowning. I was like, be faithful, be strong. <laughs> when the Lord is with us, we need to be strong, be faithful, be uh, so that's why God gave us this uh, armor of God uh, that we can um, withstand. And those evil days, through the Bible, we see it happens a lot. Remember to David, when they went to war, they come back and their city was burned. That was the evil day for them. Because all their wives, all their kids were taken away and the city was burned. And you know what people did? They all cried, those soldiers. And then they turned to David and they were going to stole him to death because of you. Just a couple days ago, he was their warrior. Now they want to stole him. But he turned to God and he says, what should I do? Should I proceed? And God says, go. And he believed in God. He stayed strong. He didn't look at what people want to do right now to him. He looked at God. He trusted God. He was strong. And when he went, it says that he catch them he destroyed the enemy he took all the wives kids back and all the the things that they had all this uh you know, the good stuff belongings and stuff yeah and then uh, see in the lord those do you guys will have those times when people are against you or something be strong and all you have to be equipped with the whole arm of god and the daniel last thing about daniel chapter 10 i think it's chapter 10 yes daniel chapter 10 it talks about his fast and prayer he was in prayer for 21 days, right? And fasting. Daniel fast, we call it sometimes, right? What happens there? God heard his prayer right away. But answer was coming. I believe it's Gabriel, angel, who was coming. It doesn't say Gabriel, but usually Gabriel was brought the message. Was coming 
and the prince of Persia, Persia is Iran in our time. The prince of Persia in the air, remember I told you we read our fight not against, uh, against the spiritual host? In the air withstood him. And the angel couldn't bring the message. But because of his prayer and fast, look what happened. God sent the Mike archangel to strike that uh, prince of Persia. So the other angel came and brought the message. If the Daniel would stop praying or fasting within a day or two, he would not receive a message. So sometimes we're not receiving something right away. Don't give up. Continue praying. You know, when my back was hurting, my first time, I got three times hurt by, in my back, and I know why. First time. It was, I don't know how many years. It was more than three, four, five years. I don't remember now. You know what people were telling me? I will come to the front. I was like, no, God, you can heal me. I pray for healing. People will pray. I, I wasn't giving up. I was like, no, I will continue praying. I know you. The Bible says you can heal me. You heal everybody before Jesus. I know. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. I believed in that. I grabbed to that. And I will go. You know what people told me? Yuri, maybe it's the tour in your flesh like Apostle Paul had. Maybe start praying. I say, if God tells me three times like he said, told Apostle Paul that it's enough of my glory, then I'll stop praying. God didn't even tell me once. <laughs> I believe what it says right here. And I got healed. I got healed. See, God will test your faith, but you never give up. Brothers, and, and uh, the, I know time is running out. I'm not going to probably go even through this. <laughs> it's a long one. But maybe next time, sometimes we can do another class, a very good uh, in here, explains him more what's the duties of Satan, who he was, how he fall, and then uh, also how we, um, it says there how God was casting out demons, how we can, I can explain really quick about the authority, power, what's the, uh, how did you say, practical way, right? How to approach that. So first thing, we repent, we serve the Lord, we uh, go with the Lord, with you guys right now. We go to Mexico, let's say tomorrow, right? You all believers, first thing, be clean before the Lord. Don't mess with that. Don't try to go around it. Because with the wicked, God is going to be wicked. <laughs> if you're like this, you're going to get it like this. But if you're with the Lord straight, your heart is open, you're on fire, God will protect you, God will bless you, God will use you. He will start teaching you. So first thing, it's always different. Sometimes if we're doing evangelism and people come to the front, you start praying and he start manifesting. What is manifesting? He start acting. He start maybe throwing something. He start yelling. He start screaming or something. It's the demons start using this body that he is in. They call it their house. They call it their house. They want to be there. They don't want to leave. And they start manifesting with this body. This body, that's what they're manifesting. They start using this body to show. And then uh, don't be afraid. Right there, start praying. More people come. Because who is in us is greater than the one in the world. Believe and know that. And you have the right. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave him. And, uh, and we pray. Sometimes they get delivered right away. Sometimes they need to talk. If it doesn't work out, you pray 5, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, we have to leave. It's okay. We continue going. But if we have time... We can uh, go to the side, talk to the person. Sometimes they just need to open up and renounce something. And then leaves. It's always, it's always it depends on the situation. And sometimes it's different. So, but you guys have the, uh, and then sometimes, like in the centers, when we go to Mexico, we talk to people. We talk to people. We get to know what they're going through, what they went through, and what they need to open up, what they need to confess, and all this stuff. So, when they're ready, and they want it to, and you ask them if they really want to. We had a, a lady here in this church when uh, she started manifesting. Finally, things got opened up. And she was really hiding. And when everything was opened up, I asked her specifically. We were praying. She was manifesting, but I would not leave. Some of them left, but not all of them. I stopped the prayer, and I said, sit down. She sat down. I said, tell me sincerely right now with your heart. Are you ready to accept Jesus Christ into your heart? She says, yes. Are you ready to die for yourself and to live for him? And not your will be done, but his will. Are you ready to give everything up? It's, it's going to be better. He'll lead you in everything. She's, she sat there. She thinked about it a little bit. 
No. Said, well, we're not going to pray for you. No, thank you. She left. Till this day, she's in the world. Bad thing happens. She was in ICU. She wrecked more than two cars now. She, like, a lot of things happening. But that's what they chose. So sometimes we need to ask, example, what can happen. One time I was preaching here, right? And I uh, looked at the, uh, I see people, right? And from the woman's center, we had a person. I see she's doing witchcraft on me. And then uh, I know who's with us is bigger than who's in the world, right? After that service, I came, I stand over there. I, I called the leader of our woman's center. I say, can you come with the sister? We want to talk. I came right there. I said, what were you doing when I was preaching? She's like, nothing. I said, no, I saw you doing the witchcraft on me. And she got scared. And I said, can I, you need a freedom from that. And she kind of, uh, and I said, can I pray for you? She's like, yes. Uh, no, she said, if you want to pray. I said, yeah, I want to. So the person didn't want it, right? So what I did, my prayer was, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, I forbid you to manifest and to do the work in this church in this center, in the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you. And that was my prayer. She smiled, and they left. I, I, they, because we, the last ones who were left from here, they came home, and then when I was driving home, when I started driving home, I received a call from Women's Center. They said, Yuri, come here right away. She's ripping the hair. Uh, she was so manifesting. All the girls got scared. They locked themselves on the second floor. We had a two-story at that time. And the second floor in the room, and then, uh, so I turned around. I didn't even have a chance to call the brothers. I just went there straight. I come there in the living room. Everything fine. Yes, sisters were upstairs and they locked, they locked in the room. And then two of our leaders, they weren't afraid of that. One of them got delivered. The other one knew. They weren't afraid of that. They went through. They were prepared they were with this. And she's, that lady is sitting next between them. And everything is quiet. I come in. I, I sit down on the sofa. And, I say, and she's like, Yuri, what else can I do? I want freedom. I confess everything. I open up everything. Help me. What else can I do? And to be honest, I didn't know what to say. She confessed everything. She opened up everything. But she was faking it. And then uh, inside, I start praying. So sometimes you don't know what to say. You start praying for God to lead you. Because Holy Spirit knows everything. I start praying inside, and I heard the voice, Spirit of Antichrist. And when I said, I looked at her, and I said, you spirit of Antichrist. Friends, she just flew up between the girls. <laughs> I got up. She runs on me. She jumps, roaring in the air. She will fly on me, and then something throws her back. Then she runs again. She flies, roaring. Something throws her back. I raise my hands, and I start praying, and she's squealing into the corner, start yelling. I start praying. She got up, and she's like, look at me. I can read the verses. They had verses on the walls. I can read verses. He's like telling me how strong he is. And I told her, you have to leave this place. Oh, you need freedom. She's like, no, I don't need freedom. I came here to teach you how to run the church and to teach them how to run the center. I say, it's not going to work here. If you don't want the freedom, you have to leave this place. She's like, no, I'm not going to leave. I said, no, you will. I say, brother, uh, sisters, go pack her stuff. So the leaders went to pack her stuff. She's like, okay, okay, okay. We got into the car. We're driving her. I took two sisters with me, to, taking her to the airport. I know what's going to happen. Enemy, if they don't fulfill their duty, he punished them. There is no mercy. There is no light. Only darkness is Satan. Only lies. And he's the father of lies. And he will punish if you're not fulfilling his will. And you fail. So what he did, we're driving. And I say, you know, enemy is going to punish you. You, you can, he can take you to psycho. You're going to lose your mind. You didn't fulfill his will. There's still chance that you can have freedom. And she's like, no. I, don't. I said, okay, can you call your mom? She was a daughter, but I didn't want any problems. So she called her mom and said, this was what happened. I didn't tell her she was possessed. But I said, she, she didn't want her to be here. I explained, and we're taking her to the airport. So I gave her the phone. She's like, yeah, mom, I'm going to the airport. As soon as we dropped her off at the airport, we left. She left her purse her suitcase at the airport, and she took off. Start calling mom. mom. Her mom called us while I'm driving with sister, taking them to the center, back to the center. Her mom is like, Yuri, please, please come back. I don't know. She lost her mind. She's not in her mind. She's crazy. I don't, she don't know where she's at. Please find her. I don't know what happened to her. 
I was like, sorry, we can't. She's like, please, I already called police department. <laughs> They're looking. I was like, okay, we turned around. Sister went into the bathroom to look. We looked at the airport. We couldn't find her. I see cops riding, searching for her. Nobody found her. I dropped them off. It was already night. I dropped them off at the center. I'm driving home. And at that time, how great is our Lord? I really, I had problems with finances right now. I had a $4,000 that I need to find to pay my bills, and I don't have them. And I'm driving home. In that moment, this is when you win. <laughs> God is with you. A truck driver calls me and says, Yuri, can I meet you at Starbucks right now in Bernie's stage where the men's center is? <laughs> and I was like, uh, it's kind of late. I'm so tired. Does it have to be today? He's like, today, please. I was like, okay. So I'm driving to the Starbucks, and I'm receiving a call from police department. Are you Yuri? Yes. Did you drop off that girl? Yes, at the airport. Where are you? I said, why? <laughs> we need to come and talk to you. You need to find a file, a missing report on her. I said, I'm not her parents. She has parents. She has fiance. They're like, no. The law is you dropped her off. You need to do it. I was like, where are you? I was like, okay, I'm going to be in Starbucks. So I'm driving to the Starbucks to meet the brothers, and the cops are driving there too. I come to the Starbucks. Sit down, and the brothers walked in, three of them. I talked to one, but three of them walked in. And then uh, in that moment, I said, brothers, uh, cops going to come here right now too, but <laughs> I just tried to explain why. And then uh, my phone rings, and then they say they found her. They're not going to come. I was like, oh, praise God. And then uh, the, one of the brothers put an envelope on the table. I said, what is this? They said, it's, it's a money for you. I said, why? You guys know what kind of house I have, what kind of cars I have. Back then, I had a big house. Nice house and then nice cars, BMW, Escalade. That's I moved when I moved from Sacramento. But no money <laughs> to pay. It went down. And they're like, we don't care what you have. We don't care what you're going to do with this money. God told me to help you. And I asked these two brothers, and they pitched in. I said, how much is there? They said, we don't know. So when I come home, I'm counting, and it's exactly 4000 so God will take care of you. We, for us not to be afraid. If enemy, sometimes enemy try to scare you so in the beginning for you to stop. But in reality, if you're strong and you're faithful, God will make you stronger. And you're not going to be afraid of any enemy, any darkness. There's, you're not going to have fear. I didn't know you can live with that. I don't have fear. You don't have fear. In the Lord, it's true. There is no fear in who? In Him. So when you are in the Lord, there is no fear. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. I know the time is running so fast. Are we going to finish our questions? You guys have any questions real quick? And then we'll finish up. I mean, are we going to pray? Huh? For in Mexico? Argentina? <laughs> Name of Jesus. Brothers, sisters, be strong in the Lord. Be good with the whole armor of God. Be faithful. Be in prayers. Seek His face. And uh, serve Him with a sincere heart. Do as much as you can with the joy. And God will do the rest. Don't look at others. Somebody got ten talents. You got one talent. That's it. That's what God cares. Don't try to be like somebody. Never. Don't walk before people. Don't try to show off. Don't try to be somewhere uh, pushing yourself through. Be humble. If God wants to raise you up, He will. No matter what pastor said, no matter what any minister said, if God wants to raise you up, He knows your heart. He will raise you up. Don't try to show yourself before other ministers. Hey, look at me. Look at me. I'm ready. I'm ready. Pick me up. Use me. I'm ready. Why don't you talk to me? Why do why you pick Him? I'm more spiritually. You're not going to grow. You're not going to grow. And don't fail in your ministry. That God entrusted you a ministry. Be faithful till the death. Be faithful till the death. That's how you're going to grow. That's how God's going to use you. That's how you're going to proceed. And anything, never, never allow grudge or unforgiveness. People will hurt you. If you allow grudge and you leave, the, you, because of that, you're leaving church. You're leaving the center because of that. You're leaving the ministry because of that. It's hard. I cannot work with these people. I don't want to work with these people. It's not my ministry. The hardest part probably is to work with people, right? <laughs> Everybody has their own character. Everybody thinks differently. And it's, it's not easy, but it's a blessing if you do it right, if you're doing it with the Lord. This is one of the things you always bless. You always give it to the Lord. You always trust the Lord, and you go forward. If I right now will be worrying 
how to pay for this church, how to uh, be responsible for Mexico, Argentina, Panama, how to be, where to find money for the centers, right? If a, you're a pastor, you need to take care of it, right? No, I mean, it comes. Sometimes people even say that. Yeah, you, and then don't take too much. How are you guys going to pay? And all this stuff. If I'm going to be worrying about all this right now, I'm not going to survive. My head would, will blow. But when we trust in the Lord and we put everything on Him and we're doing as much as we can, how we can, He'll do it the rest. And you will see miracles in your life. May the Lord bless you guys. Let's just praise God if we can all rise and thank Him for this uh, class and for this time.